Hello, and welcome to my home mastering studio. Well, clearly it's not a home mastering studio yet, uh, but it's going to be. And I thought I would take some videos, some photographs, show you what I'm doing, because this is something lots of people ask me about. So the first thing I want to say is this is a home mastering studio, not a mastering studio. I'm not going to tell you how to build a mastering studio. This is just going to be a workable space uh, in my house where I can get useful work done without having to go into one of the studios that I use every day. So my goal for this is not to create the best possible studio in the world, it's just something that's gonna work for me. And if you're interested in this topic, maybe you can make something that will work for you as well. So it's my garage uh, of my new house. And I think I'm gonna start by telling you what I'm not going to do. First of all, I'm not doing any building. I have a builder who's gonna help me with this and I'm not building a room. This is an existing garage in my house. Um, so we're going with the existing brickwork. What I have done is choose a room that is roughly the right shape. The worst possible shape you could have for any kind of studio is a cube where it's the same width, length and height because in any room, the sound waves will build up between the walls and if the walls are the same distance apart, you get the same frequencies building up and cancelling out in both directions, in every direction, if it's the same height as well, which multiplies the problems that you're going to have with the sound. You're unlikely to have a genuinely cubic, cubical room, but uh, square rooms are pretty common in modern houses. They're nice rooms to be in, in terms of the space, but they're not going to sound great. So if you can find a rectangular room for your home studio of any kind, that's going to be a bonus. And ideally, you want to go for a room that is rectangular where the long side compared to the shorter side is about 1.6, ratio of 1.6. There are other ratios that work and there's a great tool that you can download that will enable you to figure out what room ratios will work called Mode Calc. And I'll put that on the video so that you can see it. This room, unfortunately for me, is actually twice as long as it is wide. So it's almost the next worst thing to being square. Square is the worst, but if it's twice as long as it is wide, you're still gonna have similar frequencies doubling up along the length as you do along the width. And to make things even more difficult, the height is very similar to the width as well. It's about 2.4 meters in here. So it's pretty typical of the kind of room a lot of people are gonna to have to use. What I would say is it's not the end of the world. I considered trying to shorten this room by bringing some of the walls in, moving them around. In the end, I decided that having more available space was more important and that the extra expense of adding extra walls probably wasn't worth it because I'm gonna add acoustic treatment, which is gonna soak up a lot of the acoustic energy building up in the room. And that will enable me to hopefully get the acoustics in here under control. And I'll cover that in a later video. One nice room shape to consider is uh, the golden ratio. The golden ratio is 1.62 roughly. So you take the long side of the room divided by the short side and try and get your ratio as close to 1.62 as you can. Uh, it's a fascinating number. Uh, it's a number that defines the shape of the curve on a piano keyboard, or on a grand piano. It's a shape that defines the curve of the shell of a nautilus, that kind of sea creature. It defines the shape of the inner ear. And it also just so happens defines a really pleasing room shape uh, in terms of the fewest possible lumps and bumps in the frequency curve and a really uh, nicely balanced room response, frequency response in the room. So, you know, 12 by eight, 16 by 10, in a room that already exists, that's a pretty good match. That's gonna be good enough for me. Honestly, by the time the builder has put the insulation in, we could be a ways off that anyway. If you wanna make a perfectly shaped room, well actually, a perfectly shaped room would have splayed walls where the, the walls spread out from the front towards the back. Maybe you'd have a sloping ceiling. There are all kinds of different ways of creating a perfect space. In fact, for a mastering studio, you could argue that it's less important to go for that shape because you're looking for something that's going to translate into the outside world. So there is an argument that says that a mastering room should simply be as close to the ideal living space as possible. So I mentioned insulation there. 
If you want to make a really good recording studio, your best bet is to put high density fiberglass insulation. In America, they call it rock wool um, onto the walls. It's the same stuff that you put into stud work walls, into drywall. It's kind of, it's not the big fluffy stuff. It's the compact, dense fiberglass. It's not fiberglass anymore because the fibers are dangerous, but it's, it's uh, a modern substitute for that material. It's great for sound insulation. It's great for heat insulation. So you would put a layer of that directly onto the walls in a room like this or onto your initial stud work wall. Then you would have an air gap. Then you would put up another internal wall, probably made of double skinned uh, plasterboard with another layer of insulation on the inside. So you have a sandwich. So you have two solid layers, insulation and an air gap in the middle. But I'm not doing that. Uh, mainly because, well, mainly because I don't have space. This room is already on the small side for use as any kind of studio. I'm really hoping I'm gonna be able to make it work, but it, the smaller you go, the more challenging it gets, the more acoustic treatment you might need. So I wanna minimize the amount of space that's being taken up by the walls. But also, this is a mastering studio. I don't need to soundproof it perfectly because I'm not gonna be doing much recording. I might be doing some voiceover recording, but uh, you know, I, I don't need to record solo flute or you know some breathy female vocalist in here so sound isolation is not so important to me and the other reason is that the modern building regs here in the UK are pretty stringent already so they stipulate that I have to have an air gap in between the brick and the board and then there are requirements for thermal insulation and those actually turn out to be uh, very suitable for the acoustic insulation as well. I'm expecting it to be pretty quiet in here by the time it's finished. So I'm not building proper walls. I'm not building a special shape other than having chosen a room that was roughly the right shape to begin with. It's not quite big enough, that's a compromise. But um, in terms of the floor, another thing you'll often hear said is that floors should be floating. What they mean is ideally for a studio, what you want is a box within a box where there's no contact between the inside and the outside because then the sound can't get through. In practice, that's tricky. Some people float their floors on a kind of really thick rubber membrane or rubber feet, and then build the internal box of the studio on that floating floor. In here, I haven't done that. Um, what we have, there you go. You can see we have about two inches there of foam insulation going onto the bitumen and the concrete that's gonna make the floor and that's excellent thermal insulation, that's what the regs require, and that's actually gonna be pretty good acoustic insulation as well. That's gonna really kind of deaden down this floor quite a bit, prevent quite a lot of uh, traffic noise, maybe footsteps noise from elsewhere. So I, again, I'm hoping that's gonna work pretty well. So we're gonna have that on the walls, that's on the floor, and then something similar on the floor. What else can I tell you? This is an old house, 1970s house, so we had asbestos boarding up in the roof here. That's all been taken out by license removal people, cost me a small fortune. We wanna use that space up there for storage. So we're gonna have fireproof attic boarding up in that roof space there, and then more insulation, also quite a high spec insulation underneath. <clears throat> Again, that's gonna be good for acoustic insulation. And I mean, one thing to say is the more sound that you trap in a room, using double skinned walls and all that stuff, the more bass you're holding in the room and the more that bass is gonna to need to be controlled. So the more acoustic treatment you're gonna to need to do potentially. So you could be causing yourself more problems by soundproofing the room. Really think if you're gonna do a home space about whether you need some insulation. Here, I'm separated by uh, what used to be the carport from the kitchen of the main house and then there's the main house so I'm a long way from my family, who I might be annoying with loud music. Um, and on the other side, there's a good gap before the next house. So keeping the sound in in this room is not a priority for me. Uh, if it isn't for you, I mean, if you have a, if you're in a bedroom and you've got somebody sleeping in the room next door, then maybe you want to think about <clears throat> having some kind of double skinned wall to help keep the sound from passing through there. If you can, <laughs> Except the trouble is it will also go through the structure, it will go up through the roof, th under, through the doors. It's, if you want a really 
acoustically isolated room, it's a whole other kettle of fish. Behind me you can see the garage door. So we're having a wall put in across that. There's going to be a big window across there. My desk is going to be facing out there. I have a nice view out over the park, over the cricket pitch. I'm not a cricket fan particularly, but that's still uh, a nice thing to look out at. And the other thing you can see is we have the beginnings of the electrics coming in. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing, I'm facing the camera. Um, so nothing major. Initially the studio is going to be all in the box, so I don't need to worry too much about you know proper studios. You would have a dedicated earth, you would have all kinds of wiring to make sure you don't get earth loops and hum and noise. Um, the majority of my gear is going to be running off a single PowerPoint down near where I have my desk. Um, I haven't decided yet on the monitoring, that's something I'm going to cover for you in a later video. Initially I'm going to use, well I'll tell you what I'm going to use initially later on, um, but so yeah the power requirements are nothing special, the house needs a new fuse box so that's going to happen and I am having dedicated cable channels for the speakers put in around the walls to where I think they're going to be and there's going to be power there so that if I decide to go for some kind of active speaker system, uh, that's going to work out okay. So there you go, this is the shell of my home mastering studio. There's a lot of mastering purists out there who are going to maybe give me a lot of flack for posting this, but as always, the truth is if you want the best possible results mastering your music, go to a professional mastering studio. But if you want to learn how to master, if you want to play around with this stuff, or have a go at mastering your own music at home, you can get great results and you don't have to spend a fortune and hopefully this space uh, is going to prove that. So thanks for watching, I hope you found that interesting. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, check back for more updates, keep an eye on my blog, I'm going to be posting pictures and information as I go through this process. I'm hoping it's only going to take a few weeks, uh, we'll see whether that works out or not. Um, and there's loads of other information on my website about music production and home mastering if that's something you're interested in. So uh, see you for the next one. Thanks for listening.